Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. My name is Daniel Greenberg. I'm an attorney with the Competitive Enterprise Institute. I'd like to thank you all for allowing me to express my views on, on this measure. Let me begin by saying I'm a, I'm a former state legislator myself, and I, I appreciate that, uh, that the job that you all have involves making some very burdensome and consequential decisions. Um, I have a lot of good memories of my time as a state legislator in Arkansas, and uh, because I enjoyed being part of the tradition of self-government, and I, I thank all of you uh, in, a, in a small way for allowing me to be part of that tradition of self-government today. Um, House Bill 2525 as amended would greatly improve Tennessee's justice system. Uh, the bill, the bill as amended, is very important because it ends uh, Tennessee's system of uh, Tennessee's two-track process of justice. The, the current process separates criminal prosecutions of individuals and uh, civil forfeitures of their property. And the bill replaces, as amended, this bill replaces the separation with a streamlined one-track process. And I'd, I'd like to say just a word about the problems that's created, th that have been created by the, by the status quo. When Tennessee currently takes personal property, its owners face a one-two punch. First, they lose property through seizure then they discover they'll have to pay for their own representation in order to get that property back in civil court. And when they discover that they're gonna to have to face litigation costs that often are larger than the value of the property, and when they consider the odds that they might fail, they often give up. And so there are many instances of seizure and forfeiture where no rational Tennessean would pursue recovery. And I wanna underscore this point by discussing the information that's available about seizures and forfeitures in Tennessee. I looked at the available data uh, on cash-only seizures in Tennessee. That originally comes from the uh, Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security. And I ended up looking at uh, about 36,000 instances of recorded seizures from the last five years. And it looks to me as if a reasonable estimate for the median size of cash-only forfeitures, excuse, excuse me, cash-only seizures in this state is as follows. This is the med median figures, $609 in cash in 2017. $707 in cash in 2018, $695 in 2019, and $831 in 2020. So the data suggests that a typical cash forfeiture in Tennessee, somewhere around $610 to $830. And I worry that some policymakers in Tennessee may have come to the conclusion that a typical cash seizure consists of hundreds of thousands of dollars, because that conclusion is very wrong. These figures are really important for policymakers to see how seizure and forfeiture really work in Tennessee. My estimate of the default judgment rate that uh, people in Tennessee face when they're subjected to cash seizures is about 78%. And there are some people who suggest that the reason that these people don't show up in court is because they know that they lose in court. And the evidence suggests, I think, that there's a much better explanation that, that these people default, which is the people we're talking about have realized that hiring a lawyer to get their stuff back is uneconomic. It's reasonable to guess that hiring a lawyer in such a case is gonna cost, uh, cost the person who's uh, been subject to seizure somewhere around $2,000 or $3,000, and there's no reason at all to pay an attorney thousands of dollars to get back hundreds of dollars. So that's an important contributor to why we see this epidemic of default judgments in Tennessee today. I think there's also a second problem with seizure and forfeiture as it's practiced today, not just in Tennessee, but nationally. I think many of us have seen news accounts that suggest that the practice is pockmarked with evidence that revenue concerns drive the behavior of law enforcement. Uh, law enforcement officers and other government agents get distracted from focusing on public safety and crime control instead of pursuing revenue as part of their job. And I think forcing law enforcement officers to serve as their own revenue collectors it really creates very troublesome pressures, very troublesome incentives that are likely to distract them from the central mission. So I commend the people who've worked on this bill, and I thank you very much for your time.